In this video, I'm going to build a crosscut sled for my Bosch GTS 10XC table saw. I'm going to show you how I built it and what specific requirements of this table saw I had to deal with. There are of course a lot of videos about building a crosscut sled on YouTube. My main sources of inspiration were Nick Ferry's and Jeremy Schmidt's videos. I'll put a link to them in the description. But this is my first crosscut sled and I'm not yet sure about how much I'm going to use it, so I wanted to keep it cheap and simple. Nick Ferry's version looks perfect to me, but it requires a lot of costly hardware and I didn't want to spend that much money. And Jeremy Schmidt's version is much simpler in terms of hardware and so on, um, but he has a much larger table saw than I have and so I had to modify his ideas a little bit. Um, I have the Bosch GTS 10 XC which is a bit different from other table saws in that it doesn't have the standard three quarter inch grooves. It has one deeper groove and one shallower one because it has a built-in sled, which is not very accurate. So I had to deal with this and I'm going to show you how I built the sled and what problems of this saw I had to work around and deal with. So make sure you also stick around for the what I learned section later on in the video because there I'm going to talk in detail about all these requirements and problems that I had to work around. I started by putting the base plywood of my fence on the tabletop and turned up the blade as far as it would go to find out how high the fences of the crosscut sled would have to be. They need to be a little higher than the maximum height of the blade. And then I used plywood to cut strips for the fences. I cut those four strips that I used to length and then glued two of them together for the front fence and two of them for the back fence. Next I turned to the runners. I had measured the grooves very carefully um, and used hardwood beach in my case for the runners because those strips of beach would be very small. Uh, I attached this extension to the table saw fence so that the fence would not be so close to the blade because that would be a bit dangerous when the push stick gets inserted so closely between the fence and the blade. I cut those runners to about one millimeter wider than they would need to be in the end and then used the hand plane to thin them down. I did one or two strokes with the plane and then went to the groove to check how easily it would slid in. If it was still too tight, I would go back, do another one or two strokes with the plane and repeated this process until the runner would slid into the groove um, easily, but not with too much play. Then I cut them through the thickness. This doesn't have to be as precise as the width because they can be a little thinner than the groove is deep. And of course, in the built-in sled of the table saw, um, the runner has to be thinner than in the other one. Here you can see the result. They are flush or a little bit under the surface of the table saw and you can see that the left one is thinner than the right one. Then I put some washers into the grooves um, to lift those runners up for the glue up so that they stuck out of the surface of the table saw a little and I put them in and then applied glue to them and put the base of the crosscut sled on top. I used bricks to hold it down until the glue had dried. To make it more sturdy, I drilled some holes, countersunk them and put in some screws as well. Then I tested how easily the sled slid. It didn't go as easily as I expected, so I used a card scraper to thin down the runners a little more. This was not such a good idea as it turned out later. I'm going to talk about why in the what I learned section of the video later on. Then I could 
work on the fences again. I cut them to the final width. Cut off the corners for a nicer look. Then I use my router to round over all the edges that I would touch with my hands later on. And then I gave the front fence a little chamfer at the bottom. Um, this is so that sawdust can escape to the side and doesn't interfere with registering the workpiece against this fence. Then I attach the back fence. This is the one that you don't push the workpiece against, so it doesn't really have to be square. It's just there for stability. So I drilled holes and put in screws. Then I made that first cut through the back fence and into the base of the sled. I pushed it very carefully and then ran into a problem with my riving knife because it turned out it wasn't really exactly aligned with the blade and I'm going to talk about later how I solved this problem. For the moment I took out the riving knife completely and then repeated the process of cutting into the base about two-thirds into the plywood so that I could use a large square to establish the front fence being square to that cut. This is not the final attachment of that front fence, but just the first step to get it as closely square as it is possible with this method. Later, um, the five cut met method is being used to fine tune this setting. Then I use the five cut method. This is explained very thoroughly by Nick Ferry in his video to which I'm going to put a link into this description. Basically you make one cut, you mark the side in which you make the first cut with a number, then you turn um, so that this side you just cut faces the fence and you make several more cuts on each side of the workpiece until you have cut each side. And after doing four cuts, you end up on the first side, which is now your fifth cut. So you make that fifth cut and cut off a strip that's about three to five centimeters wide. And you use that strip to measure it. I use calipers to measure this strip at the top and at the bottom. I wrote down those measurements on the strip itself. And the difference between the top and the bottom then gives you an idea how far off your fence is in terms of being not square. And to correct that, it turned out that my fence had to be moved about by the width of two pieces of paper. So I put those two pieces of paper in there and this piece of scrap attached with a clamp for reference. And then I very carefully push that fence into the direction that it would need to be corrected. And then I screwed the square in place. What you don't see here is that it took another four or five rounds of five cut method to actually establish squareness. And even then it wasn't perfect about which I'm going to talk about uh, talk later. Then I sanded the bottom of the fence of the sled and attached some lubricant. This is silver glide, which is especially made for woodworking machines, but you can use paste wax or some other lubricant as well. Then it slid very easily. And for safety, I attached a block of plywood at the front fence so that the blade would not stick out at the point where my fingers are.
first important thing that I learned is that it's quite difficult to get the runners that I made from hardwood here. I used some slats or cleats from, of, made of beech. Um, that it's very difficult to get them to just the right width so that they glide smoothly in the grooves but um, don't have too much play. The method that I use is that I cut them on the table saw to about a millimeter wider than they need to be at the end and then I use the hand plane to plane them down and after each two th plane strokes I went back to the saw, tried it, went back to the plane, did another stroke or two, went back to the saw and so on. This is of course a bit tedious but it, in the end it worked out alright so that they don't have too much play but slide well. If you don't have a hand plane you can use a card scraper to use the same. I have another video in which I show you how I first used my card scraper and I'm going to link it over here in the corner so if you want to have a look at that. A card scraper would be a very cheap option um, if you don't have a plane at hand. The second thing is that um, the, the runners might glide smoothly if you try them out in the grooves but it's a different story if both of them are installed and the whole sled has to move. So there is a lot more friction then and you, have to, and you might have to use the card scraper again to thin them down a little so that they actually glide while being installed. Another thing is that I think it's, very, it's a good idea to apply some paste wax or in my case I use some lubricant which in German is called Silberglide. I don't know if that's available in other, in other countries or what its name might be. Um, to apply this to the bottom of the sled early on because I thinned down the runners because I thought there was too much friction and once I had this lubricant applied to the bottom suddenly it glided very easily and it almost had too much play because I had thinned down the runners so much. So applying the lubricant early on will give you a better chance of just hitting that sweet spot of the runners being just thin enough but not too thin. I also had some difficulty getting the riving knife to align properly with the blade and since it was not really properly aligned the crosscut sled wouldn't slide as easily as I would like to. So I'll show you now how I got the riving knife to align properly with the blade and how you can do that too. You're going to need an errand wrench, a small screwdriver and something to lift off that insert. So you take this off and if you have never had the riving knife out you can take it out by unlocking these two screws here and what I found is that my riving knife was not properly aligned with the blade. If you're, going, if you're using um, a straight edge like this you can see that it's now much better. There's still a little bit of a gap behind here at the back but that's the best I could get it to work at the moment so I'm going to leave it um, and I'm not going to unscrew it now completely because it took me about 20 minutes to get it to this state so I'll just show you how I, met, how I did it and, but, and explain how I did it but not going to take it out and here is that little screw and this screw sets the angle of the riving knife and if you adjust this and use the straight edge along the blade here. You can check if the straight edge is parallel to the blade and then of course it should just align with the riving knife at the back here as well. And then you just have to play with the turning of this screw and then very carefully slowly adjusting the uh, and tightening these screws. I found that it's a better result if you tighten them in um, changing from one to the other doing little turns. So don't turn one of them completely tight and then go to the other, but turn this one a little, turn this one a little, check again, turn it again, turn it again, until the riving knife is fixed again. And using this method I got it to work quite well, even though it seems to me that this is a weak point of this saw, because it's very difficult to get it to align. The last important thing that I learned is that the hardest thing about building the sled is to get it really square. Um, I showed the method in the video but it turns out that 
the measurements that have to be corrected are so small that it's very hard to get it perfectly square. Basically, I had to move this end of the back fence about the width or the thickness of a paper or the double thickness of a piece of paper. And that, of course, working with wood, turning in screws, is very hard to do. Maybe I'm a bit cumbersome in these things. I spent at least an hour and a half on this part. Correcting, making the five cuts, trying again, measuring again, moving the fence by hair's width and so on. So it, if, you, if you want to build it, be, be aware that you might have to spend a lot of time in making it square. And that's one reason, I suppose, why, many, why in many build videos this step is not really shown in its entirety, but you just see how the fence is built and then the, the person says, well, and then I made sure it is square. But as I said, this took quite some time for me and it might take for you as well. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, if you leave a comment, if you share it with your friends. And if it's your first time here and you like what I do, maybe you want to subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. I hope to see you back soon for the next step on the woodworking journey. Bye bye.